can Erica dance with the partner? <laughs> Hello, my lovelies. Happy New Year. It is 2020 now, and that is just crazy. Like, where did the entire year go? <laughs> I have no idea. I, so, I was basically kind of looking at my channel and just seeing the last video that I made, and I, I mean, it's basically been an entire year since the last time I created a video unfortunately um, it's always been my goal to at least film one video a month but you know 2019 was just completely unexpected I took some time off during December to just you know stay off of social media um, not be online as often I told so many people that I was going to be unavailable um, just because I needed to step away I wanted some time away to just really kind of zone into the present try to appreciate the holiday season and basically catch up on sleep I usually tend to write resolutions I tend to write a recap of the year um, I've done that for a few years now but I just didn't do it this time around just because 2019 wasn't very memorable in a positive way. Um, not saying that there weren't good things that happened throughout 2019. I would say that the not so good things sort of outweighed all of the good. There were a lot, a lot of good things, but sometimes I feel like it's not necessarily the quantity or the amount or the number of things that happened that can necessarily make a year good or it can make a year back bad. I think it's all about, you know, how much does something actually weigh versus the other? Like, I don't want to recap so much of a year that I just want to forget and throw away completely in the back of my mind, but I just want to really focus more on the future and moving forward. And I basically just want to discuss more of what I would like to get out of 2020 um, and what I'm looking forward to and the things that I'm wanting to at least change or improve or even rediscover. Um, I feel like 2020 is not only about discovering new things, but I think that it's also a good time and a good opportunity to even rediscover things. What I would mostly want out of this entire year is to focus more on my health. Like basically, I want to do a lot more kickboxing. I want to cycle more. So I was actually introduced to cycling, which I really enjoyed and I didn't think I was really going to like it that much. Like I've heard so many people and I've had friends talk about cycling and spin classes. I thought a really good new opportunity to venture into and just to try something completely different. So when I took the classes, I actually really enjoyed it. I didn't realize that I was going to like it so much that every single time I would walk out of the class, I would feel so strong and I would feel so empowered. And then I really liked the fact that it was also very diverse, that, you know, you had so many different people going in for different goals, but in a way, like, you could actually really visually see that there was such a positive and supporting community, um, which completely surprised me. And when class started, like, basically the instructor announced to the entire class that I was new and everyone applauded, and that's something that I wasn't expecting because... I've attended like another class or two of a different workout format, but there was never anything like that. You were never introduced, like no one ever really paid attention, but for this, it was actually really, it was kind of nice because I'm like, oh, okay, now, you know, now it's getting real. I definitely want to do cycling this year. Um, I definitely want to do more kickboxing. So for the entire month of January, I've already scheduled my workout days. Um, I've already scheduled my sessions, my classes. I actually just joined a new gym. So the gym where I was previously, I switched it to a different one. Um, just because I want to start out completely new, completely fresh. And I'm just really looking forward to it. Sort of focusing on my health will kind of help out like the other aspects that I want to tackle this year. So for example, I feel like it'll help me to kind of balance things out. 
Um, it'll help me to plan. It'll help me to coordinate things a little bit more efficiently with what I want to do, whether it's at work, at home, with my blogging. Um, I think it'll give me also an opportunity to maybe even read, um, to create more time for journaling, for writing, for just disconnecting um, when I need to disconnect. And that's always the hard part because when I really get into something and I'm passionate and I really believe in it, like I tend to be a bit of a workaholic and I can easily spread myself thin where I'm just all over the place. I'm all over the place at work. I'm all over the place at home. I'm all over the place with blogging. Like I'm just everywhere because there's so much to do. There's so much to tackle. And sometimes I can just overdo it that I get exhausted. I get tired. But at the same time, I love it. I think when you do something that you love and that you really enjoy, you just get a whole entire different feeling out of it. 2019 was definitely busy for me everywhere and in, in every aspect. And it was just like completely nonstop. Like I had things scheduled almost every single day, almost every single weekend. I had so many collaborations, which is great. And I'm not going to complain about it because I love working with brands. I love discovering products and just creating my own brand and getting my name out there. I really enjoyed that a lot. I have never been so active than 2019. Like I've never worked with so many brands in one year than I did throughout 2019. And I'm pretty happy about that. Like I'm, I feel very fortunate. I feel very blessed. And I think that's awesome because then that makes me feel like I'm doing something right. And like I said, I'm doing something that I enjoy and I love to do, whether it makes sense for people or not. And when people reach out to me that they want to collaborate or they want to do projects, like that just lets me know that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be and I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. I got to meet so many people. I got to make new friends. I got to make new connections, new experiences. And I would probably say that was actually the highlight of the entire year. And that only makes me even more excited for 2020 because I'm just so excited to, to know or to see what new opportunities are going to come my way. Who are the people that I'm going to meet? What new friends am I going to make? What new connections am I going to make? And I like the fact that all of the people that I've met so far, they're all from different backgrounds. They're all from different industries. Um, even though they enjoy blogging as much as I do, or they're vlogging, or they're doing whatever, like everyone is doing something, and they're all coming from a very completely different place. There was one event that I attended, or actually I attended it twice, but I would say the first time was sort of, you know, a bit more memorable because it was actually the first time I attended the event. But it was a blogger event. I really liked it because there were different sessions. Um, there were so many people I met from Portland that I never even knew. Like we started, you know, exchanging information. There was this one guest speaker that really stood out to me the most. And for, for the life of me, I can't even remember her name right now. But I've actually seen her twice already, both times that I've attended. But the first time she was actually the opening speaker and we were all sitting in chairs and when she started she actually started out with you know sort of a, a meditation which was really nice it was actually like very calming i would say that was like the moment in like months where i actually felt the most relaxed i'm going to let everything go i'm just going to focus on this moment and she had us close her eyes and she was just kind of talking we were all meditating and it was awesome it was really great it was so relaxing and I thought, okay, maybe I should actually try to incorporate meditation a little bit more. But the one topic that she actually discussed that really um, caught my attention the most was she was talking about fear. And when she was talking about fear, she was sort of telling her own story of what fear actually means to her. People were standing up, they were discussing their own fears. Like it really, it really made me think a lot because I thought, okay, what are my own fears like what are things that I want to tackle that I want to overcome or what are the fears that are actually preventing me from wanting to do the things that I want to do whatever our fears may be we get so sucked into it that it can completely just halt our life or it can sort of like suck us into this bubble that 
is not able to let us move forward or move towards what we want to do or what we want to achieve. And mostly because sometimes fear can be in the form of, you know, like, what are people going to say about me? Like, what are friends going to say? What are, you know, what's family going to think? Like, it can be a lot of that. Like, a lot of fear can actually come from judgment. Everyone in this entire room has that same fear of being judged or of being criticized for maybe doing something that they really love or that they enjoy or they have a hobby that they want to do they want to achieve or maybe they have a talent or they have an idea whether it's like blogging you know whether it's at work like everyone has this fear of sharing their voice sharing their opinion because they're going to be judged like we all have different paths we all have different journeys we all move in a very very different pace and I think when you start comparing yourself to other people of where they're at in their life, what are they doing, what have they achieved, that can actually come into factor of, of decisions that you make, of, of things that you want to do. And all of a sudden, you start to mold yourself in a very completely different way, but not mold yourself in what you want to be, but you start molding yourself based on how people want you to be. Everything that you're doing is based on what other people want you to do, or based on what other people want you to do with your life, or how other people would prefer to see you instead of you doing exactly what you want to do and, and who you want to be. Like, we're not the same person that we were 10 years ago. We're not the same person that we were like if you're in your 30s, you're going to be completely different than if you compare yourself to the person when you were in your 20s. I'm becoming way more opinionated than ever before. And I think 2019 definitely gave me the opportunity to basically sort of like stand up for myself, stand up for things that I truly believe in, to stand up for things that I truly value that the fear of being like judged or criticized, I started to sort of break that down where it didn't really become a fear anymore because life is just so short to live in fear. Life is so fragile and it's so unpredictable that you, when you realize that a lot of the things that you were afraid about or a lot of the things that you feared about just started to become very minimal. The older that you get, the less fear fearful you become, or at least for me, I feel that way. Another fear of mine was having the ability to say no. Because again, what happens when you say no? People get so accustomed to you constantly saying yes all of the time that the moment you say no, all of a sudden it's like people get offended. People start judging you. People start criticizing because you're saying no. If you feel good during the moments that you've said no, then how is that bad in any way? How is that negative in any way? You're not saying no because, you know, you want to be like, I wouldn't say like a bad person, that's actually not the word, but sometimes like you have to say no to things that don't serve you, to things that have no purpose, to maybe things that you just don't feel comfortable on doing or comfortable saying because maybe you don't think they are the best idea or you don't think that they are the best decision to make or maybe you just don't have the time. Maybe you are busy. Maybe you have other priorities. People get so afraid of saying no that they constantly say yes to the wrong things. And I think 2019 just really pushed myself a lot in that sense of being able to say no. And all of the times that I actually said no, I felt so good about it. Like I felt so relieved, such a huge weight being lifted off. And then I noticed that anytime I would actually say no to the things that just didn't serve me or they had no positive effect on me or I just knew it wasn't the right decision to make, I just felt really good. I felt at peace. And if there was like any like, I don't know, negative feedback that would come out of it, I just it didn't really bother me that much because I knew my reasons for saying no and I knew my reasons for saying yes to certain things. And that made me feel good. And again, I feel like I've just become a lot more opinionated. I've become really good at saying no because sometimes you have to. Sometimes people can actually take advantage the more you say yes to things. Everyone has the right to say no and I think everyone shouldn't really care so much of 
just being judged or being criticized. We're all going to be judged and criticized on things no matter what we do anyway. So we might as well be judged and criticized on the things that we actually love, the things that we enjoy. So that is something that I definitely want to manifest a little bit more throughout 2020 is to still keep saying no to the things that do not serve me in a positive way and to not be so fearful of being judged or criticized and to place my health first. I want to start eating a little healthier. I want to start working out, not necessarily during my detox months, but I want to carry that out throughout the entire year because I think it's very important. I don't think that working out four months out of, out of the year is enough. I want to create that consistency. I want to get my body used to moving and being active. When you're stressed, that just creates such a negative impact on your health, on your mind. Um, on your mood. Like, I just want to focus on being the best version of myself, being the best that I can possibly be, and to also just see a part of myself that I haven't seen in a really long time. Rediscover another passion that I haven't done in a while, like for example, art. I haven't done art in years, probably maybe 10 years. Art was actually a very, very huge thing in my life. Even when I was in high school, like it was huge. And I loved it and I enjoyed it. So maybe somehow I can actually get back into that. Even if it's only like drawing or painting something like once a month or once every three months, that would actually still be something than nothing at all. I don't think that my talent per se will ever be the same as it was before. But at the same time, I'm actually really curious to see like how much my art would have evolved over time. My style would probably be very, very different than when it was when I was in high school. I definitely want to do more dancing. I love to dance. I'm actually, I would say I'm at my most happiest when I'm dancing. There's always like this bad perception of <clears throat> whenever you tell people that you love to dance because everyone thinks that, oh, she's like completely like, clubbing or she's like the wild person or she's like out partying and all that stuff like there's always such a negative perception whenever you tell people that you love to dance because I think dance is also an art in itself dance is like basically meditating <laughs> meditating on the dance floor in public like People always think that, you know, if you love to dance, you're you're out, you know, trying to hook up with people. And that's not the case at all. Like for me, I love to dance because I love to dance. Dancing actually forces me to focus in the moment and makes me forget everything that normally like congests my life or congests my mind. I'm in my element the moment I'm on the dance floor because I forget about everything. I forget what I'm doing tomorrow. I forget what happened yesterday. I forget what, what put me in a bad mood. I forget about all of the negativity. I forget about everything. And I'm at my most happiest when I'm just like listening to the music and dancing and I don't go to dance because I want to meet people or I want to hook up. That is not my thing. I go, to, I go to dance because I want to dance and I love to dance. I actually don't dance well with a partner. <laughs> I've noticed that about myself. I don't. Like I need space. I need freedom. I need to feel like I'm just... The older I'm getting, the more free-spirited I'm becoming. More than ever, I would say. And so I've noticed that anytime I dance with someone or, or I have a dance partner, I feel suffocated. I don't feel free. I feel restricted because it's no longer me doing my own moves and being in my own element and being in my own space. It's someone else being in my bubble. It's someone else's lead that I'm trying to follow. And I just don't like it. I don't know if I'll ever get to a place where I'll actually feel comfortable dancing with someone. I just love having my own space and that's important for me. So I don't know, we'll see. Maybe that could be a challenge of how good can Erica dance with a partner. <laughs> I don't know what, you know, my future holds. I don't know if I'm, you know, ever going to get really, really, really sick at, at any point in my life. But I was thinking to myself that if for whatever reason, I would actually get to that point where I would get sick or maybe I had an illness or something. Like I don't want to feel 
at that moment that I didn't do the best that I could do or I didn't do the best that I could have done. Like I don't want to feel that I didn't do anything towards my health or I didn't do any ways to improve my health. Like I want to feel like, okay, I did all that I could. I did my best. And if this is where I'm at, then I'm at. But I'm not going to feel like I didn't do my best or I didn't try to modify certain things about my lifestyle and my health. Even having the ability to be more opinionated or having the opportunity to the opportunity to say no more often, that's actually going to lead towards a healthier version of myself. So I feel like this video probably kind of went a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but I thought instead of reflecting so much on the negativity that 2019 brought about, which was more negative than positive in my opinion, I want to focus on how can I make 2020 the most positive and the best version of myself no matter what it entails but just being able to do the best that I can do to bring the best version the healthier version of myself the positive version of myself and yeah that is it um hopefully you guys enjoyed this video I don't know how many videos I'm going to produce this year, but I really want to, again, do the best that I can to make that happen. But I also want my videos and my channel to be a bit more real, you know, not necessarily doing like, you know, maybe once in a while I might do like a makeup look or I might do like a favorite. But aside from that, like I want it to be real and as real as it possibly can. Um, and also like hopefully be able to inspire not be afraid to not give in to fear, to not give in to the fear of being judged or criticized, to not give in to the fear of thinking that you're going to fail or what are people going to say that of not giving into the fear of being opinionated or of having a voice or of saying no. Only you are the one who's actually living your life. Only you know what is actually best for you, what you want out of the year, what you want out of your life how you want your life to be. Like we all have control of which paths we want to take. We all have control of decisions. We all have control of how we want our life to be. And if there's anything that I think if you're not happy about that you want to change, I think you should go ahead and do it and not give in to fear. I think for 2020, and I'm going to place a challenge for you as well as a challenge for me, Challenge for 2020 is not to give into fear. And not giving into fear can lead you to discover something completely new, can lead you to maybe even rediscovering something about yourself that you haven't done or you haven't seen in a long time. Not giving into fear so that you can be able to say no to the wrong things and to say yes to the right things not giving into fear so that you can give yourself the opportunity to live and be at peace with your life. Challenge 2020, let's not give into fear. So let's see how we do it this year and let this be a really, really good year for not only myself, but for everyone. It's a, it's a brand new chapter. It's a brand new decade. It's a brand new page, a brand new book. And we're all in charge of how we want to write it out. Not everything is going to work out as we want it to be, but it's our own story, it's our own life, and this is a brand new opportunity to start it out the way that we want to start it. So thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video. Um, I hope that it's inspired you in some way, and I hope that you actually do accept my challenge of not giving into fear for 2020 and let that be a theme. And um, let me know what else you would like to see in my channel. I'm definitely open to any ideas um, of what you would like to see. And I will definitely try my best to record many more videos this year. So again, thanks so much for sticking around and for following me, for subscribing. Feel free to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, I'm 
actually way more active on Instagram than in any other of my platforms. So if you ever want to like see what's going on, what I'm doing, what I'm up to, Instagram is actually the perfect place to go to because then you'll actually be up to date with a lot of things. So yeah, so again, happy new year and I will see you guys again soon. Bye.